Morning, fellow zombies. Are we alive yet? Are we awake yet? It's 4.09 in the morning, West Coast time. It is the 10th, Saturday, February 2024. <sighs> Mostly screwed up, sleep deprived. Weaver, John Z. Roseman, California. <coughs> we are not doing the diary of the griever named John Weaver, per se. And we are cleaning up a little bit of the Holiday cheer, just a little bit. We'll do some redecorations when we can. I have to move a few things. Because it's important. Rumblings are about on YouTube. Of people expressing their opinions about certain homeless people out there that he's got an issue with. And, you know, people actually have their own opinions of what they think about homeless people, including even if they are in the military or former military. I don't know if Artist in Recovery, a.k.a. Daryl P., is having a conniption fit or trying to rate or drum up some more ratings because of a ranting and raving at this point. He has the First Amendment right to do so. But in doing so, he's enacted a, a bit of concern among those who work with the homeless vets out there who also work with the homeless people, not to mention work with the vets who aren't homeless, for those who have served. Hmm. Concerns me a bit. I think chasing numbers is more important than anything else, and not realizing that uh, certain things do matter in our matter of pride. And. Yeah, it's been a while since I get this thing readjusted the way I want it or needed it. So I'm not quite sure what his major point is. I mean, yeah, he was talking about Curtis Leeway, and he already knew that he was a New York punk anyway. I did say that, didn't I? Coming from California, I'd seen too many punks like him anyway. They think they're the law, and they're trying to keep the streets clean and safe. We do have the L.A. chapter over here, but they don't get any attention at this point. But if they do, it's probably with uh, bracelets around their wrists. They don't tolerate vigilantism out here in California. Sure as hell don't tolerate out here in Southern California. They don't. You're vigilante, they go after you. Period. That's law enforcement out here for you. And the one thing they don't go after is the homeless vets still laying on the streets or can't get anywhere. And I don't think that they understand sometimes why the homeless vets are there. I know it's probably because of drug situations, but unless you've already been homeless and you've been out there destitute, you really don't get, you really don't get it. Now for a long while, my brother and I had been immersive with the vets out there since moving out here to the Antelope Valley. You want to hear the story about my big brother? He really wasn't an asshole that time, but he could be the most uh, protective person around, especially around me growing up as a kid. He was older, firstborn, and dealing with a hell of a lot of crap on his shoulders that a firstborn would actually be. He sees me as a kid coming out of mine. At first, he doesn't want me because he feels his own world was threatened. But then it took him a long while to get used to the fact that he's got a younger brother to protect. Part of my brother's inside nature was to be a protector of sorts. Even though he, you know, he felt like he was being shoved away 
and he really was. It took him a long while and some therapy to help him out with that. And Ma, some therapy, and how to deal with my brother's tantrums at times. So, that being said, yeah, my brother had developed a bad reputation as a kid because he kept getting into fights, not because he wanted to be a bully. He was trying to protect people who were being bullied, and he didn't like it. It's no wonder the elementary school principal didn't like my brother at all. He didn't hate him. He just couldn't understand my brother. My mother understood that she was going to tell him what was going on. She did a lot of bullying. She kept trying to get information out of my brother. My brother couldn't help the nature of himself to being a protector. I'm cleaning around this kid here. Took me a long while to get used to a big brother as a kid. He saw how sickly I was at the age of four. He didn't understand that I was born with, with plumbing issues. So going into surgery was a scary thing for my brother. He wasn't going he wasn't about to go for the chop shop. I was. Crack open the chest, open up the heart, put myself in a heart bypass machine. They keep me alive. And while they're doing that, they're, op they're operating on my, my heart, and I go dying three times. Go back up, now, up, now, up, now. Wondering why the hell I'm going through this damn stuff in the first place. Very scary for a four year old. Terrifying for a big brother watching his younger brother go through this damn crap. He gets into junior high, he's still a protector because now he's protecting his a friend. And uh, misadventures happening in junior high. But he still gets through junior high anyway. As I'm trying to get through preschool and getting into, into elementary school. And then he gets into high school. <coughs> Because of grades that were screwed up uh, and certain issues that came up, he got transferred out into a special school in Calabasas, which is long gone, which has been long burned down because of the fires we've had over the decades. I would have loved to see that school again because I've been there once as a kid. And it was, it was neat. It helped helped out special kids with special issues. My brother had a learning problem. He called it a learning disorder. I don't know what the hell it was. He really didn't go into specifics of what the hell he had a problem with, but he had a problem with certain things. But he met some good, decent people in there, too, that became best of friends throughout life. I'm grateful for that one. <laughs> Call of Duty came up. In his uh, growing up period, I think it was junior high to nearly senior high, he had met up with a cousin of his who had been in Vietnam. David Cameron, God rest his soul, God bless his soul. He was a former sheriff of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, when he came out of Vietnam. And the story I, I tried to remember concerning about David Cameron was he was former uh, construction battalion engineer. They got a monument. Actually, yeah, they got a monument of all those who have been lost in wars with a plaque at Point Magoo at the CB base there. But also when uh, he was saved in combat in Vietnam in his first tour, Excuse me one second. <coughs> Damn it. In the first tour of Vietnam. He met up with uh, 
what they called the Sea, Air, and Land Regiment. They called the SEALs. Specially trained. And a lot of tactics. And they were just being implemented. The first two battalions. Or, yeah, first two units, actually. And he wanted to be one of them. So David Cameron applied, went through the training. And about a year later, he went back in the NAM as a SEAL. He's got construction, mad, mad construction skills, and he's also a demolition expert of sorts. He can create them, he can blow them up, and then recreate them again if he had to. <coughs> So when my brother had met him after he survived Vietnam in his about three or four tours, I think, he was training off the coast of Long Beach when we actually had a naval base out there in California, construction yard and an active uh, naval base, including facilities. My brother had been taken by his nieces had considered sisters at the time. He was very young. I was too damn young. I think I was probably in the hospital or something like that. I don't know. And Dave went out swimming. He didn't mind the water, man. This guy was a fish in water. For a Libra, no, no, not a Libra, for a Gemini, he loved the water. He would swim over to the buoy and back out on the beaches of Balsa Chica. One time, he got his foot caught in the chain. They got anchor chains out there for those buoys. He couldn't get up. I mean, he was struggling like crazy, screaming his head off. And then he finds himself surrounded by a SEAL unit who was getting his foot rescued. We didn't have the Baywatch shit going on during those days. This was back in the early 70s. <coughs> So the SEALs took him over to Long Beach, notified my aunt and uncle, who had to explain it to Ma. And my brother knew what was coming after that. Bye, but Back then, there was uh, the spanking. You can go crazy over this one here, but back then, they considered it, you know, an educational tool of sorts. We'll do this on another time regarding that. My brother was, you know, fawned over by Mama and then disciplined and fawned over again. She had a certain dominance at this point over here to let him know. But my brother couldn't tell Ma. Well, actually, he told Ma what was going on, but it made a difference in his life. Something changed in him. My brother changed from a, from a hooligan into an active learner that he wanted to be just like his cousin. He wanted to go into the military. He wanted to be a SEAL. He wanted to be a SEAL. A frogman. That's what he thought. Frogman. He had seen films about being frogman. He would go into the apartment's swimming pool. We had lived in the apartments for several years before we moved into a house. And this was back in North Hollywood in those days. He used to live in Huntington Park. I mean, there was a little history, so I'm still trying to sort out through my head on this one. As my brother was trying to tell me about the stuff throughout the years. Ma never explained history enough to me. Actually, she didn't talk about the history. Only my brother did. He was getting the stuff from Ma and from everybody else, so I had to get it filtered from him on this one. When I was born... It didn't, Back in 66, it was in Downey Community Hospital. For about a couple of years, we lived in Huntington Park. So my brother grew up with my aunt and uncle and their sisters. Kind of considered them his sisters. Basically cousins, though. And my mother was trying to get housing going on over here. Trying to get a job full time to get some secured income at the time. 
She worked for a company called Sweetheart Cup when they were in business out in North Hollywood, Sun Valley somewhere. I remember one time as a, as a kid I'd go there once and see her boss, a guy named Stan. I'm leaving his last name out. I know who he was now. Uh, one of the best damn things that ever happened to our family. Anyway, I'm trying to get back to the story over here because I've my brother's growth at this point. There's a point to this thing. It's going to be a long ass video, so I'll get some popcorn or something like that. Maybe a barf bag. <laughs> anyway, so my brother grew up under the influence saying that if he gets his good grades going and swims a lot and gets his body mass built up. And my brother did that. He got into athletics. He didn't join teams. He wasn't a team joiner, but, you know, he, when, we were, when we were living in an apartment before we moved into a house, I think it was back in, right after the 71 earthquake we had, uh, between 71 and 72, I think we moved into the house on uh, Van Owen right by Ethel. It ain't there now. It's an apartment complex, but. He was happily being a damn fish in water. So he was building up his lung capacity. He was building up his body mass. He was trying to pass classes left and right. He wanted to be a SEAL. He was told by his cousin if he kept up with the good grades, and they, do, they did background checks, that he would probably have a shot being a frogman if he actually did. But you know, be mama's uh, approval throughout the years. Uh, my brother was growing up as a teenager, so was I. We moved to Hazen Ar Arleta, actually North Hollywood, to Arleta back in 76, had the car accident, uh, bones, but they can heal, and be strengthened. And, uh, he'd be out there busting his ass, trying to be what he could not trying to be an asshole. Sometimes he was an asshole at times. Getting back to it. When he was a teenager. Trying to complete the 10th grade. He couldn't complete the 10th grade at one particular high school. So he got transferred over to another one. A special school out in Malibu. Transportation provided. This was a school for special needs. It was called Harmony Center. Later on changed to the name of Mountain View Academy. There were good people in there training kids how to be through education and a lot of a lot of love and a little bit of discipline. Well the discipline is you get to work the special projects. And they worked their ass off on that one there. My brother, when he got a little out of line, they gave my brother a task. Build them a corral. Maybe some other students were not as engineered-minded a little bit, but my brother had observed a lot of things and learned things concerning about engineering a bit that he helped built a sheep pen to keep their uh, sheep in there and a horse pen for about a semester about 20 weeks to nearly a school year I mean, it took him that long between classes and his free time at school he was building consider it punishment but consider him experienced at that one When they actually had a, a day for students and parents to go meet their teachers, we had a nice long drive from Arleta all the way over to Harmony Center. Trailer, uh, trailers put together, modular, 
So they would have a big, huge, uh, big, huge room for people to go in and see what their students were accomplishing in there. Other than that, the walls would be put up, and then they had individuals over there. It was a hell of a place to go to, I'll tell you that much. I saw it in my brother's work. I should have been more impressed by it. I was when I was a kid. What the hell was I knowing about it? But I was seeing this damn thing that my big brother did, and he was proud of it. He had friends. He liked that school. But he also had the bite of patriotism, and he wanted to join the military. He had a hell of a fight with Ma on this one. He had a hell of a fight. He was going into the military, regardless of what was going to happen or not. So, what was it back after the year of 77? Hang on one second. Company 276, United States Naval Training Center, the anchor. Recruit Training Center Command, San Diego, California. And it's heyday in San Diego. That was my brother's home for uh, several months. I've had this for for so long. I got this book from uh, from the PX out there. I'm going through the pictures where I can actually see uh, some of these guys going through training and I just wanted to show you that this is a class of 276 just a regular boot from the US United States Navy there. Guy with a smart ass look as if somebody said a joke and somebody did said a joke. Where my forefingers on him right now. David Warshaw, my big brother. He graduated. Not with honors, but he graduated. And there is more to this story coming up on this one. I'm trying to find a way to get this back in here and get a pressure. Ah, hell with it. I'll keep it out. I'm going to have to get that bag pulled out and stuff backed in. There's a story concerning about the Navy in there. When you go through the recruit, you have to get, before you get into a uh, training center like that, you have to pass an ASVAB. Uh, in high school, when I was going through, uh, they tested all the seniors to see if they actually had aptitude of what kind of military service you could be uh, valuable to. I wasn't very good at the ASVAB. I really wasn't. I mean, they asked a lot of mathematical stuff that I couldn't figure out. And everything else, okay, fine. I mean, I'd be a general clerk, and that's about it. Or maybe the shopkeeper. But I couldn't qualify for the military even if I wanted to. Because I said about the heart surgery, my doctors wouldn't sign off on it, so I would never, uh, at least until the heart sealed up, would be able to join the military. 
and by the time it did it was already too late for me to get in there it wouldn't take me age age <clears throat> once I reached 30 that was it so my brother had been lucky skin of his teeth in the miracle of God he got into the United States Navy he was actually shooting for the Marine Corps he wanted to be a Marine originally I mean he wanted to be a frogman but then he decided he wanted to be a Marine because our uncle who had served and I'm not talking about David Cameron there was another uncle we actually had I actually had a couple of uncles who actually served in the military they never died in service they died after service and one particular uncle who lived on San Diego, special prosecutor, and very well respected in the in the fleet, being a marine champion of boxing and special investigator, and then doctor in criminal psychology. Morris Cameron. Uncle Bill, God rest his soul. He admired him a great deal, my brother did. And he was a Marine. So I switched from Navy to the Marine. But the Marines wouldn't take my brother, but the Navy would. So my brother joined the Navy. It was a cold morning. Three o'clock in the morning, and we had to be there in Hollywood. Hmm. Now, downtown Los Angeles. We had to be at the ASFAB building down there. I didn't know why David was doing this. Dave had an argument with Ma a while ago. and He was taking the early deferment. He was going to get out of high school early, graduating, and then he was going to join the military. He was so set on it. Ma tried. Ma tried not, you know. <clears throat> she didn't want him to join She didn't want him to join. She didn't want him to lose him in combat or anything else. She wanted her baby safe. But she relented, and he was going anyway. I was seeing a bunch of guys standing around this one building, wondering what the hell was going on. My brother was telling me after my left, he went inside. Filled out paperwork, got health checked up. He was cleared. And then they had to wait for the bus. Bus would take him down to San Diego. Ma and I had early breakfast. And then went back home, apparently. I'm seeing my big brother going to the military. What the hell was I doing? I was going to I was going to elementary school. I was going to miss my big brother. Dave goes down to the training command. <clears throat> and already you get a petty officer or one of the other training NCOs over there getting on the bus, pounding, screaming, yelling, telling them to get their ass out now. Line up. Everybody's running in grabbing the crap throwing it on the deck and you have these NCOs trying to get these guys lined up yelling and screaming in their faces my brother just took it he just took it there is one particular NCO that my brother never liked for about a week since my brother filled out the paperwork, got into the military, and started to do, slowly but surely, the training for this damn thing. There was one particular NCO that my brother really, really had an issue with. This guy kept going into my brother's face all the damn time. There was another... NCO out there who was a superior just by a few weeks. 
He was cool. I met the guy. I liked him. I met the other guy that my brother royally hated because this guy would get in your face left and right, yell and scream because that's what they did. And this particular guy was a royal asshole. But there's another story about him anyway. This is going to be a long-ass video. And I'm not doing this in chunks. So, I may have to do it in chunks. Top two gentlemen, there's your company commanders. Guy on the um, far end, wired. Next to him, Jefferson. BT-1, boiler technician, Jefferson. Uh, I never going to figure out what the hell AB-1 was. I never did check that one out. Hold on. Okay, MSN, AB-1. Aviation boatswain's boatswain's mate. Well, okay. An Airedale. An Airedale. So, I may have to do this on two. Just for storage space. So, I'm going to do part two.